They're always like made fresh and ready. Yeah. Donuts, or wow, donuts and drips in Richardson. Yeah. There's um, one in Frisco. Oh yeah, well. probably that's probably the one I've been to actually. Yeah. Uh, sweet days, dessert bar. They have really good donuts and they're really beautifully made, but they also taste really good. And then Jerams or Jerams, not really sure on the pronunciation in Dallas. Okay. They also have cronuts, which are delicious. Oh, um, now favorite donut. <sighs> There's a couple of things that make a good donut. <laughs> okay, I'm down to hear this. I'm down to hear this. Taste. Okay. Presentation. Yeah. Creativity. And overall, I guess, like, I Fine. guess presentation. But, yeah. like, what the way it looks. What about texture? Yes. Okay. Definitely makes a difference. I'm not a jelly donut connoisseur. I don't want anything that's filled. No, that's no, not gross. my jam. But I want... A beautiful donut. I want to see the love that went into making the donut. Okay. Like I want it to be beautifully made, but when I eat it, I want it to taste just as good as it looks. Okay. I want it to have that classic donut. Yeah. Soft taste. Yeah, I can see. Light, that. not too dense. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. I want a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. But so I don't necessarily have a favorite to answer yeah. your question. I do like a classic blueberry donut. Okay. Um, one of my favorites is a blueberry streusel from Hertz Donuts. Okay. And anything lemon, not filled, but lemon top or anything with like cereal toppings, that's quite Ooh. popular. Very good as long as the cereal is not stale. Oh yeah, no, I definitely have had some donuts where the cereal was like stale yeah. is not good. You're like, I'm out. It's gross. Okay. How long have you been an athlete and how long have you been a coach and like what sports did you play? Okay. So I've been an athlete I don't know, forever. I started playing softball when I was like six. I played sports all through high school. And then by my senior year, when it came down to like, hey, if you want to go to college and play, you kind of have to decide what you wanted to do. So stopped playing basketball in middle school, stopped playing volleyball in high school, and stuck with softball. And I played competitively outside of school, like uh, select ball, ever since I was probably like 10 competitively. And every weekend we just played and played and played. Always went to nationals. And then, uh, so I played through high school. Went to college and played for four years. So I guess I played till I was, I graduated to 22, I guess. And then stayed for grad school. Started working in the weight room. Um, and that's kind of where I got my first itch at coaching. And helping out was a GA or a graduate assistant for two years in the weight room. Got a lot of hands-on experience. Got to work with every team, yeah. uh, including like the men's sports, football, and stuff. Got to write my own programs, and now I've been coaching uh, for ten years. That's sick. Over a little over ten years, actually. Yeah. That's which really cool. Sounds like a long time. Um, do you? How do you? If you had like one piece of advice for programming, as far as. Let's just choose ollie lifting. What mm -hmm. would you? What would that advice be? Um, I would say when it comes to programming, there's no one way to do a program. Everyone has different philosophies. Um, if you can defend why you're doing what you're doing and it makes sense, that's all you really need to worry about. But at the same time, I think everything you read in a textbook is not necessarily exactly how it should be. I personally learned all of my experience and programming experience from working hands-on with like a mentor or another, you know, strength coach. And I got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Um, and that's where I learned all my programming. It wasn't necessarily from like reading a book yeah. and taking the test and them saying, oh yeah, you're good to go. You know how to program. It was yeah. more hands-on experience and trial and error too with yeah. teams. Cause you may write something and you have like a great idea of what you want to do. Yeah. And then when you get on the floor to do it, you may only get to like one or two things, but you yeah. have like a list of 10 things you wanted yeah. to do. So it just takes some learning. Yeah. But for sure, um, experience. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I definitely have talked to people and they just are really overwhelmed by mm -hmm. it. I was lucky that I ended up at Metroflex Plano. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with all these really good strong men who could then give me yeah. advice. My and, it's so, my and it's so individualized, like what you can do with some, per like one person you may not be able to do with the other one because yeah. of, athleticism or ability or 
um, or just the way strength built. or yeah or yeah, anything like, like yeah. too much frequency and something maybe. yeah and depending on how much the person can train how yeah. often you're going to see them are you going to see them every single day yeah. two hours 30 minutes once a week like that makes a huge difference in their progress yeah Okay, so you were the assistant coach for Radford University and played softball for SFA. You've been around athletes for a while. Does it have much carryover to everyday people wanting to improve strength and physique as far as athletes? Um, and what is the major difference between athletes and just regular people? So asking what is the carryover from being an athlete to a coach? Um, like coaching athletes and uh -huh. then coaching regular people. Oh, okay. What are the major differences? Um, <clears throat> major difference is, from my experience, when I was coaching at the collegiate level, one of the major difference was they had to come see me, whereas yeah. regular people are paying to come see me. Yeah. So that's the first difference. Um, so expectations are a little different there. You know, someone's paying you, you want to make them happy, um, but at the same time they trust that you know what you're doing but you don't want to lose them, yeah. hopefully. And then athletes, you know, you have an expectation and a job kind of up to their coach. Like they need to do X, Y, and Z, so you need to make that happen, whether they need to get stronger, they need to get faster on the field, all that stuff. But it's it's definitely different. I try and treat all of my, I would say, like just regular clients, maybe not um, specifically athletes, if they're this there because they want to get stronger, lose weight, whatever the goal is, I try and treat them like an athlete in a sense of like, hey, we're all going to learn the same movements. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to do it or you're scared, I'm going to make sure that one, you're going to learn how to do it. You're not going to be scared. We're going to be safe doing it. And you're going to feel comfortable doing it because um, I want them to know that they're, they're capable. They just have never been taught. Yeah. So I like to treat them as much as I can like I would a normal athlete because I think with the right coach everyone can learn like the same movement oh, yeah. patterns. It's just a matter of they've never done it before. Yeah, no I agree. There's definitely, my mom, is now she competes, she's a strong woman, but she was not an athlete for like the longest time. Mm -hmm. She spent the last like six years getting really mm -hmm. strong but she was like really overweight mm -hmm. and and until she started lifting weights she didn't realize that she had the potential to be yeah. really competitive. Yeah, yeah. And then it, like, opens up this whole new, like, world and, like, yeah. confidence and, like, mindset, yeah. which I think is pretty incredible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as your training goes, what format do you use for yourself? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So, I've always done strength and conditioning because that's what I was accustomed to, like, being an athlete and then being a coach. And then I would say... Mm -hmm. But a few years ago, I got into weightlifting. What I thought I learned about weightlifting in college was not really what weightlifting was. In college, it was more for speed and power and just yeah. kind of going through the motions where when I actually learned proper weightlifting, I learned a lot of technical things. Um, I learned a lot of mobility, and I kind of got into that. I think I got into it so much because I was kind of – it was a challenge, yeah. and I was a little bit bored with what I was doing. Saw some results, so I continued to do that. But then I kind of missed doing the old stuff. So I went through a phase where I tried to do both, like weightlifting, um, almost two a days, like weightlifting in the evenings and like strength and bodybuilding in the mornings. Okay. And then I realized quickly that that took a toll on my body oh, and that yeah. I wasn't 21 anymore and I couldn't do that. <laughs> so stopped doing that. So currently I'm doing like a hybrid of Weightlifting, strength and conditioning, bodybuilding, some conditioning slash metcons, and just a whole lot of different stuff. Each day we do something different. Yeah. Um, I have a, a really good guy I know right in my programs. Shout out to Marshall. And um, yeah, I'm having fun because it's different and yeah. it's kicking my butt completely, but my body doesn't feel as beat. So yeah. Yeah, it's, I definitely... it's fun to just change it up. Yeah, I definitely just went through that for the last, like, nine months I've been with the coach. And, I mean, she got me strong. Yeah. But it hit a point where it's like I was not enjoying it anymore yeah. because the goal was only to get as strong as possible. Yeah. And now that goal was like, yeah, I don't really enjoy yeah. this. Yeah. So then when I switched, now I'm like, okay, I'm having fun again. Yeah. I enjoy the gym. I'm not doing yeah. so much volume and accessories yeah. that I'm, like, hating the gym. Yeah. I've kind of learned now that I'm doing this is that I was working out so much and doing so much and I guess I felt like I had to yeah. or I had to do that amount of work just to see the results and it's like I was killing myself but oh, really yeah. it's like I don't have to do that much I was probably overworking myself yeah. 
and hey, now my body doesn't hurt. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't wake up and, like, not miserable. So. Yeah. Or your just mindset. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely hard when you, when, because that's how I felt too. I was like, I have to do this or yeah. I will not be a competitive strong. Yeah. If I don't do this, yeah. I'm not going to be as yeah. strong as I potentially could be. But over the 10 years that I'm a strong yeah. man, it doesn't really matter that much yeah. as long as I can continue progressing. Yeah. And, and 10 years and I'm not and that's another thing I'm not competing yeah. I'm not doing a powerlifting me I'm not doing a weightlifting me yeah. I'm not doing a bikini comp I'm not doing any of that stuff so people will be like oh you're not then why are you working out so hard yeah. and I'm like just for myself because yeah. I like it yeah. and I want to stay in shape and everything but I'm I'm not gonna kill myself doing it because I'm not I'm not trying to win a trophy or a medal no. or anything like that yeah okay so you just said you don't compete. Do you have any plans to ever compete or in anything? Maybe a uh, donut eating competition. Oh, that would be <laughs> Actually, I say that. I don't think I'd want to eat that many donuts. Maybe like a donut. Tasting. Uh, like, like see if you can like blindfold and taste it. And then, oh, that'd be, that would be. I would like to be like the judge of a donut eating yeah. contest. Like I want to sample the donuts. Yeah. But, I feel like that would burn you out though if you were just cramming. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't go for speed, but maybe go for taste. Or if I could like compete against someone making like a beautiful ooh, donut, I would ooh. for sure win. I know what it takes. That would be fun. <laughs> you should do that. Now. I have to do that. But no, I'm not competing. Um, yeah. In lifting, no, just doing it for fun. Yeah. Okay. What would your theme song be if it played everywhere you went? Oh. Like as soon as you walk in into the the gym or a bank or something it just immediately turned on i immediately thought of um only because this was like my karaoke song it was love shack really yeah <laughs> that would be silly if that, that, would be if s- that played and i walked into the bank <laughs> but it's a great like, song well, it's a on. great song and it gets people going yeah no that's a good song cool i think that's <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all I have. Um, what's your social media? Where can people find your coaching? All of that stuff. Social media at Mish underscore Huffman. And then um, I'm in Arlington. And our gym Instagram is at Arlington Strength. Come check us out. DM us. I'll message you back. Come try us for free. Cool. Come bring me donuts. Whatever. Oh, that'd be <laughs> <laughs> Now you're going to get all kinds of donuts. <laughs>